And ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Deltastic, the voice of the Meta Wrestling Network and Cyber Created Championship Wrestling. This is the Meta Wrestling Network and Cyber Created Championship Wrestling. And this is episode 7 of Triple CW's Warpath. We are coming to you from the Meta Mecca, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania once again. And we have a huge show in store for you tonight. The Triple CW Internet Championship will be on the line once again tonight as Lover LaVar's challenge continues as well as a huge six-man tag match tonight which will put The Void teaming up with the Maniac Mason Gilbert to take on the Inner Circles Joshua Cross and Jimmy Reno as they team with the Triple CW World Heavyweight Champion Scythe here tonight we do know now our main event is set for scorch fest 2018 and it will see scythe taking on and defending the triple cw world championship against the maniac mason gilbert gilbert will get his rematch uh, in a stipulation that we do f know that we will find out here later on tonight what the stipulation for that championship match will be but right now we have our opening contest as we see Brian Stokes making his way out. Brian Stokes just recently picked up his uh, first win uh, in a long, long time here in Triple CW since uh, this new change of attitude, this new shift of focus from Brian Stokes. Stokes claiming that he's going to do things his way. He's going to do things for him. Uh, it, it proved successful uh, in his last outing against Jonathan Drake, although he decided that wasn't enough and decided to pick up a steel chair and damage the leg of Drake uh, trying to prove a point I'm guessing he looks to I guess prove another point here tonight as he takes on Pac it's like I said it's been successful the first outing for him with this with this new change with this new focus um, as he says and we'll see how that momentum continues here tonight we are just a few short days away from Scorchfest 2018 will come to you uh, on August the 31st the end of the month spectacular Scorchfest 2018 as we see the match here kicking off and we got Owen Brian Stokes immediately with the shoulder tackle taking Pac to the outside and now stomping on him stomping in the back Picking him in a very, very much more aggressive uh, approach to his matches does Stokes have. And now you see him mocking him now. Wait, Pac coming back with a form. That one staggers him. Wait a minute. We got Nasty Brain Buster on the outside. That one spiked him. Pac is a very, very capable individual. He will, he will give it his all. He will give 150% every time in that ring. He has no slouch when it comes to in-ring competition, as uh, Brian Stokes is finding out right now. Go for a short DDT. No, Stokes buries the knee right into the midsection. Picking him up here. Let's go ahead with a delayed suplex and now just showing his strength. Showing his strength, using it as some sort of workout as he drops him down for the suplex. So it looks like he's climbing to the second rope here. He's trying to bait him up. He's trying to bait him up and a double X handle missed as Pac was able to get out of the way, showing his quickness right there, but unable to grapple. And oh, just a nasty slam. Dropped him right on his head and neck. But Brian Stokes and now a boot right to the midsection. Now twisting at the head and neck right now is Stokes. But he's sinking it in. Brian Stokes looking to prove another point. Looking to get another win. Looking to uh, find that momentum that he has not had since uh, since we went live here. We got a whole, you know, six episodes. Now seven and ends of Gary. Right to the neck and a nasty stiff kick right in the chest. We were on episode seven. And uh, he's just... just the past episode has just gained his momentum, picking up a win here, trying to look to uh, to move the train out of the station in his career. 
Brian Stokes now. Much to the dismay of these fans, and he doesn't seem to really care anymore. Uh, Brian Stokes was one of those guys, you know, you meet him, uh, you have like, the interview session, everything's going well. You're like, oh, that guy is a very, very nice man. He looks like he'll be a great fit here, very positive attitude. Uh, apparently, it didn't get him anywhere. Uh, let him tell it, and he's deciding to uh, pick up the aggression, uh, turn up the intensity, turn up the heat, so to speak. And uh, he picked up a win, and he's looking to pick up another win here. But Pac right now is looking to shut that down, but a knee lift right up and over. Up underneath the jaw there, dropping the elbow right across the small of the back. And Brian Stokes dragging him away from the ropes. They're rolling him over, and then with the press, one. One count only, you got to do a lot more, a lot more if you want to put down Pac. And wait a minute, Brian Stokes picking him up here. What's going to do? They just dropped him face first. Face first across the top rope. Pop nice recovery. And Irish whip into the corner. Burying the shoulders right in the midsection. And Pac now. Oh, just double feet right in the chest. That cannot feel good. And now Pac trying to gain some momentum. Trying to pick up the pace here. He's got a nice knee bar on Brian Stokes right now. And Stokes just buried the foot right across the side of the face. Could that be it? One, no. That's one way to break the hold. Kick him in the face. Irish whip in the corner. And now Stokes setting him up on the second rope. On the top rope, I should say. Get him up. Oh, what are we going to do here? And a fall away slam from the second. Showing the power. Just throwing him up and over. He's got him dazed here. He's got Pac Days. He's going for a power bomb and a reversal. A DDT. Nicely done by Pac. A DDT. And that is the opening. That is the window of opportunity wide open if you're Pac right now. And he's going for. Oh, nice. Uh, almost like a, a curtain call or saving grace move, whichever your preference. It was effective. But wait a minute. Nice pickup and slam. Again, showing his power, showcasing his strength. Again on the press. One. One count again. And not only has Stokes' moveset gotten aggressive, he's also aggressive on, on his amount of pin attempts. He seems to be going for a, a, a broad, broader number of, of pin attempts. I don't know if it's strategy, trying to wear down his opponent, like I said, or, or, or what. But he, he is definitely uh, increasing the amount of pin attempts and, and looks to gain a victory, gain momentum here. But Pac right now has the momentum and a sit-down powerbomb. Nicely done. That sit-down powerbomb, and he's got Stokes in trouble. And what's he doing now? Very indecisive right now. And it's one thing you do not want to do with not only a man like Brian Stokes, but anybody in Cyber Creative Championship Wrestling is have indecisiveness. It's not know what your next move is. You definitely need to know what your next move is, or else you're going to find yourself in a world of trouble, a world of pain, a world of hurt. And uh, most times they're not on the losing end, but snapping him down on the head and neck. And he's rocked. He is rocked. Brian Stokes is definitely rocked. And I think Pac right now has all the momentum that he needs to try to put this thing away. And wait a minute. Snapmare. What's he going to do here? Oh, a punch right into the gut. Right to the gut there. Oh, oh overhand shot. Wait a minute. Nope. Go behind. And now Pac with the go behind. Nope, the reversal. These guys are reversing left and right. This fireman's carry takedown. And where's he going? He's shooting him down with a snapmare of his own. And a huge club and blow right to the side of the face. Nothing pretty about that. And now ranking back on the head and neck. Again. Like he's trying to twist the head of Pac right off. He was just trying to twist his head off and wait a minute. Brian Stokes is like he's setting up for something here. He's setting up for the spear and he hits him. He hits him with the spear. That's his finisher. One, two, he got him. And Brian Stokes picks up another win. Another impressive victory by Stokes. And again, maybe there's something to it. Maybe there is something to it. And Stokes now pick, picking up his win. And wait a minute, where's he going now? Pac is in trouble. And wait a minute. 
Brian Stokes again with the chair, again with the steel chair. He's going to try to do the same thing he did to Jonathan Drake. Come on now. And wait a minute, there's David Wynn. And David Wynn is out. David Wynn picks up the chair with the save. Nicely done. Thankfully, David Wynn was there. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back here. And we're set to hear from the venomous Vinny Watts. It's a few short moments ago. David Wynn thankfully came out to save Pac from a from another another could have been injury. We don't know. Uh, Brian Stokes picked up that chair. Uh, thankfully, like I said, they, they were able to uh, to safely get Pac to the back. And we're gonna hear from this jerk. The venomous Vinny Watts was definitely busy on our last episode. He was clashing with, with Vault and Vengeance. He was a very busy man, and he's going to be a very busy man at Scorchfest because we do know there will be... These these three men have been entangled uh, for, for so long. There will be a triple threat match between that man right there, Vinny Watts, Vault, and Vengeance at Scorchfest. Those three men, and it'll all come to a head. Those three men have been tangled, like I said, for quite some time. And it will come to a head, the triple threat match at Scorchfest on August the 31st. Stay tuned for that one, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to stay tuned for that, any other episodes of Warpath, um, Ladies First, you like anything you see and you have not done so, please like and subscribe 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 to the meta wrestling network so you can get ringside for more cyber created championship wrestling action thank you for watching um thank you for joining us once again and uh, it is much much appreciated and what's not appreciated right now at this point in time is the presence of someone like vinnie watts As he continues to boast about how good he is and how much better he is than everyone. A member of a faction we, we know as the Inner Circle. His cohorts will be, be involved in the main event tonight. A six-man tag main event. As they team with world champion Scythe to take on Maniac Mason Gilbert and the tag team champions The Void. And Watts done spewing his garbage. So in a collision course with Vault and Vengeance at Scorchfest. And ladies and gentlemen, we are setting up for our next contest here. And it's going to be the Punk Bryce Rogers taking on Triple CW Women's Champion Vanity. And Vanity has a huge test. Um, someone gaining momentum, winning the number one contender's battle royal on our last uh, lady's first episode. That being Diamond Delgado. But right now, a huge task at hand taking on Bryce the Punk Rogers. And Bryce, always head knocking, always, always ready for a fight. She's a very, very scrappy young lady, is Bryce Rogers. She goes against the current and two-time Triple CW Women's Champion Vanity, who is the self-proclaimed and could very well be uh, the best athlete on the roster, men and women both included. As she defends her championship against Diamond Delgado, at Scorchfest. Sprite's getting ready. And here she is. There is the champion, Vanity, two time, two time women's champion, Vanity. She makes her way down to the ring here. For what she calls a, uh, what she calls a tune up match. Trying to, trying to keep loose, keep warm. For her big title defense at Scorchfest 2018. So our world champion makes her way down to the ring. 
very, very confident individual is Vanity, and for good reason. She is hella talented. If you have not seen Vanity uh, in the ring, you are definitely in for a treat. She is very, very talented. She's looking to take on Bryce Rogers here. Well, here's Bryce Rogers, and there's Vanity. And here we go. Wait a minute, and Bryce Rogers coming out with a nice crucifix slam there. And Rogers, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to use your quickness. You're gonna have to headbutt. Make that two, make that three. You're gonna have to come out, and you're gonna have to, to, to go full speed ahead. That was the, the recipe for success for former women's champion Missy Lee at May Massacre. That was how she was able to defeat Vanity by just going full speed ahead. Vanity couldn't, didn't have anything for it, but it looks like right now she is uh, settled back into this match. Vanity picking up her opposition, a clubbing blow right to the back. An Irish whip into the ropes. Missed drop kick. Able to sidestep was Rogers and hold on to that to that other rope, stopping her momentum. And Rogers nicely done kick. Right in the chest. The blow to the back and another headbutt. And Bryce Rogers now in control of champion vanity. She's twisting the head and neck. Slamming her down. And picking her up again. You gotta know, and a jawbreaker there by the champion. You gotta know that number one contender Diamond Delgado is looking on. Is definitely scouting a forearm shot. That was staggered, Bryce. And a snap suplex. Beautifully done. Beautifully executed by Vanity. And now Vanity is slamming the head repeatedly down on the mat of Rogers. And another jawbreaker. That cannot feel good. Holding the face and the mouth was Rogers. A huge splash from the second rope. Hooking the leg here. Referee in position one. One count only. And Rogers has a lot more fight left in the tank. A lot more. Shot to the midsection. And a fallaway slam. Nicely done fallaway slam by Bryce Rogers. A boot right across the face. Later on tonight, we do know that the Triple CW Internet Championship will be on the line once again as the challenge has been answered by, I believe, Crimson Nova. So Crimson Nova, oh, nicely done. Wheelbarrow stunner move from Vanity. It will be Crimson Nova taking on Internet Champion tonight for the Internet Championship. Lover Lavar, as his challenge continues, as he continues steamrolling all of his opposition in Triple CW. And nicely done by Bryce Rogers from the top rope. Huna Karana taking down the champion. And Bryce Rogers has got an opportunity here. Can she capitalize? Snap suplex again. Float over. Not even a one count. Picking her up is Vanity. Irish whip into the corner. And Vanity now, what's she gonna do here? Let's go for a split legged moonsault. Split legged moonsault, beautifully done. Dragging her away from the ropes very smartly. Snapping her down. And Vanity now looks to be in complete control of this contest. Complete control. And wait a minute, she's rolling her over. It looks like she's going for that submission hold. That pain in vain submission. And Vanity's got her locked in. That pain in vain. And she taps. She tapped her. She tapped her. And Bryce Rogers had no choice. She had nowhere to go. No choice but to tap out. And Vanity looking amazing here. Getting ready for her title defense against Diamond Delgado at Scorch Fest. Bryce Rogers was game, but. It was too much. It was too much. It was move after move, and then that pain in vain submission hold. If she locks in pain in vain against Diamond Delgado at Scorch Fest, we're going to see what we have saw uh, Vanity remain women's champion. 
So if you're Diamond Delgado, avoid, avoid, avoid this move right here as we see the replay. This pain in vain submission hole. You have nowhere to go, especially when she locks those arms. She locks those arms in and she squeezes. There's nowhere to go. And you see right there that Bryce Rogers had no choice but to tap out. No choice but to tap out. And there's your winner. Getting ready for a big defense, August 31st. And wait a minute, here's a number one contender, Diamond Delgado. And Delgado just coming out of nowhere, getting a heads up. Well, trying to anyway, because it looks like Vanity now has adjusted to, to the attack. And she's all over Delgado. Delgado's plan backfired immensely here. As Vanity, club and blow right to the back. She tried to come out and get a measure of a, wait a minute. A nice leg trip takedown from Delgado. Delgado was trying to make a statement. Oh, nasty kick right to the side of the head. Oh, she took her down with that kick. And she's got the champion dazed. Here's a boot. And wait a minute. Looks like she's going for that glitz and glamour DDT. Oh, and she spiked her. Delgado spiked her with the glitz and glamour DDT. And she's just laid world champion vanity out. She just laid out the women's champion. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here. We're back with Mythos. It looks like we're going to have a rare rare thing here. We're going to hear from Mythos. That's strange. He's strange, but we're going to see what's going on. We do know that he had a, uh, a huge win, picked up a huge win, and it has definitely opened some eyes here in Cyber Created Championship Wrestling. And he looks like he's very hype here. When was he ever the nice guy? It looks like he's definitely trying to make a wave, trying to make a splash here. Mythos is serving notice to the roster. Mythos. Mythos is warning everyone here in Triple CW. He's going to make a name for himself. Mythos definitely made a statement picking up a picking up his huge win. Our last episode. And he wants to make it known that he can outwork everyone. That's that was his words. And he is looking to make an impact here in Triple CW very rare that we've actually seen this man use any dialogue but he meant it and ladies and gentlemen speaking of impacts these two factions I'm talking about the void and the inner circle have had a huge impact on each other they've been entangled ever since the the end of the tag team title tournament where the void walked away with the Triple CW World Tag Team Championships, but everybody, all parties involved, have developed some bad blood for each other, including uh, Hex, who's a part of the Void, and Lillian Cross, who is obviously in the inner circle, and the wife of Joshua Cross, who will be in our main event tonight. And these women, this bad blood has, has, has spilled over, it's been social media everything between these two women 
and it's going to come to a head here tonight. They are going to meet, and this matchup here tonight is a false count anywhere contest between these two women, and that woman right there is, uh, you got to think on paper and by looks, a false count anywhere, no disqualification environment. Looks like it might favor Hex a little bit more than Lillian Cross, even though Cross is very crafty. Uh, Cross definitely knows a thing or two about shortcuts and things like that. We've, we've seen her not only in action, but we've seen her in her corner of, of her teammates, of her cohorts uh, in the inner circle as well. But right now, Hex this mad woman I never like looking at that shot just the face is just just haunting yeah the fact that she's unstable and it doesn't doesn't make for for anything good she awaits her opponent false count anywhere between these two women here right now on episode 7 of Warpath now here comes Lillian Cross. Sporting her faction colors. The inner circle versus the void once again here. False count anywhere anything goes in this matchup. Everything's legal. There are no count outs, no disqualifications. You get the pinfall wherever you get the pinfall. It could be ringside, it could be in the back, it could be on Broad Street for all we know. And here we go. We got Hex, who. I don't know. And Lillian Cross. And here we go. And Cross. Cross just got taken down with a head scissors just right out of the gate, right right from the start of this thing here. A nice arm drag by, by Lillian Cross on the hex. Front face lock. Irish whipping nicely done. Irish rip into a leg trip. And it's that craftiness we're talking about with Lillian Cross. And Cross now just grabs a handful of hair and just slings Hex across. Now mocking her now. Kick right to the back. Where's she going? Cross to the outside. Hex seems to be fired up a bit. Looks like she was baiting her. And she grabbed a baseball bat. But that baseball bat did nothing. She actually took a long time to grab that baseball bat. It's in play though, but... She was not able to use a nice fireman's carry takedown. But Cross. And these women can do anything that they want to each other in a floating DDT. Onto the outside. That one spiked her. Foot right in the face. Falls count anywhere matching the women's division here in Cyber Creative Championship Wrestling. A beautiful drop kick on the outside. And a nasty kick. And they're just stomping away. And stomping again. Just stomping away at Cross is Hex right now. And another drop kick takes her down. And Lillian Cross is finding herself in a world of trouble she's in the wrong part of town and now hex has got that bat and hex just hit lillian cross right over the head with that baseball bat and that's the anything goes environment and she is all over cross right now here's a cover one one count i'm surprised that lillian cross was able to kick out at one but right back on the attack right back with a kick right to the face was hex and a snap suplex Hex is in trouble, big time trouble right now. But wait a minute, Cross, I should say. Cross coming back now. And instead of showboating, she needs to grab the bat, grab a weapon, or, or or say a prayer or two because Hex was all over her at this point. But nicely done, suplex, dumping her on her back and neck. And just as I say that. Hex comes back and Hex just throws her down right in front of the crowd here. It's the cover. One. 
One count again. And again, showing some toughness here is Lillian Cross. But back to the offensive, back to the boots. And a twisting leg drop from Hex on the Lillian Cross. Who is still in all kinds of trouble. And just got slammed right into the back. Her back first right against the ring post. And Hex. Hex is just, just smothering her with offense right now. Wait a minute. Yeah, she's going to have to desperately do something with a reversal. And a suplex right on that bat. It looks like the small of the back of Hex landed right on that baseball bat. Cover one. A one count from Hex. As this matchup continues as the referee gets the hell out of Dodge. And I don't blame him. These men are spinning. Oh, and just right face first onto the bat. The referee coming back one. Barely won that. I think the referee being so far away, being so distant from the action, not wanting to get caught up in the action as Hex just rubs her face right into the mat and just drops an elbow. That might be that might be helping out whoever's getting pinned at the time because the referee's got to come all the way back over and make the count. One forearm missed. A forearm shot. That one quarter. That one staggered her in a DDT. Nothing pretty about it. Just a textbook DDT. Face first, referee a little better position right there. One, two, and no, two count. That was almost a three count, almost a three count. And Hex believed it might have been that DDT right on the outside, right on the face and head of Lillian Cross. But Cross, nicely done. Cross still has a lot of fight in her. And Cross looking for the opportunity, something to open up for her to try to put Hex away. The longer this drags out, I got to believe won't be the best scenario for Lillian Cross. It's Hex now. It's dragging her over to the guardrail, but no. And Cross. Cross able to break it up. Lillian Cross picking her up, but no. Inverted DDT reversal on the outside. And just keep getting dropped on her head. Just keep getting dumped on her head. It's not good in another DDT. Another DDT. Our brains could be scrambled at this point. One, two, three. And they had to be. Just too many dumps on the head. And Hex picks up a huge win here in our false count anywhere match. And just, just DDT and inverted DDT. And just literally across his brains have got to be mush right now. She's been dumped on her head on the outside a numerous amount of times. And it was just a matter of time before she wasn't able to kick out. And we just seen it right there. Look at this DDT. Just bam! Just right on the face and head. That cannot feel good. Another angle there. Bam! Just dropped her with the DDT. You can see Lillian Cross. Getting dumped on your head, getting DDT like that definitely, definitely takes its toll. There's only so much fight that you can have. There's only so many times you can kick out of it. Here we see it again, and another one. And that was lights out. That one was lights out. And Hex picking up a win for her squad, the Void. Will the Void be able to win another one here tonight as they team with number one contender? Maniac Mason Gilbert to take on the inner circles Joshua Cross and Jimmy Reno as they team with world champion Scythe in our huge six man tag main event coming up for you as we inch ever so closely to Scorchfest 2018. And next up, we have some tag team action as the Hunters, who've picked up a big win recently, take on the Handsome Devils, who have also picked up a pretty impressive win lately. Who's going to keep the momentum going as the tag team division starts to heat up, starts to gain momentum? We do know that at Scorchfest 2018, it will be the Void defending their World Tag Team Championships against the Inner Circles, Joshua Cross and Jimmy Reno in an Extreme Rules match. 
So this is going to be a no disqualification. All four men in the ring at the same time going at it. The winner of that will be the World Tag Team Champions. And will the winner of that on the other side of that matchup have to deal with uh, a team like the Hunters or a team like the Handsome Devils who, who have been building momentum, have been gaining, gaining momentum uh, week after week? We will see. Um, these, Like I said, these two teams picked up big wins. Uh, one of these two teams will continue their winning ways here. Uh, and that will go a long way into determining and shaping our tag team division as we not only uh, move past Scorchfest, we move into the future, we move into the, the new 2K19 platform uh, when, you know, we get a facelift essentially and we start a new journey in Cyber Created Championship Wrestling. Who knows uh, who's going to be jockeying for a position when that time comes. Will it be this team? The team of Bradley Grace, who you see on the top rope to your left. And that very hype man who's on the outside right there, John Jackson. Both of these two men definitely have the, have the tag team continuity. These guys are clicking. These guys have chemistry. But, I mean, you, you can argue that the Hunters also have chemistry. The Hunters being actual brothers. Talking about Michael Hunter and, and Franklin Hunter. Both of those guys uh, are, are brothers. They grew up together. So, obviously, they have some type of chemistry. So, will will the experience and the chemistry of Blood Brothers take on uh, how, how well will they do against this team? We're about to find out right now as John Jackson takes it to Franklin Hunter very early going here and a back elbow takes Frank Hunter down and Jackson right now and the Handsome Devils looking pretty good but wait a minute now oh yeah nice reversal by John Jackson here and a Northern Lights on the Frank Hunter and Jackson and Grace oh, up and over beautifully done suplex taking him down right there Oh, and dropping the elbow right across the face. And John Jackson looking pretty confident as the confidence grows. And what's he going to do here from the second rope? Oh, nice forearm smash from the second rope. Taking him down and tagging in his, his older and bigger brother, Mike Hunter, was Franklin. And now Mike Hunter in with a leg lariat and a shoulder block. And the power man here, he's the stronger man of the team and arguably the strongest man in this matchup. But wait a minute, a nice reversal by Jackson taking Hunter down. And now Jackson's going to tag in his tag team partner, Bradley Grace. And Grace in now. And Grace hits with Irish whip. Both men running into each other at the same time. They get the same thing with a nice go behind by Mike Hunter here. And picking him up. Almost a torture rack type move. Oh, and just dropping him right across on the ribs in the midsection. A huge stop there. Went big knee lift by Grace. Takes Hunter down. Now picking him up. A oh, nasty overhead shot. And a side wrestling leg sweep. Nicely done by Bradley Grace. And Grace now. Looking to swing the momentum, looking to swing control for his team. As he sets up Hunter to ropes. And again, both men running into each other, but right there. And a knee just buried right there. He's picking up the, the advantage there. Wait a minute. And Bradley Grace now using the speed and nice throw, nice suplex there. Down. And these handsome devils are pretty impressive. These guys, these guys are well-rounded. These guys can, these guys can jump on you. They can fly on you. They can land some punches and kicks. Uh, you see a very devastating spine buster that uh, John Jackson possesses. That was one of them, their last matchup. So they're very dangerous in that ring. Mike Hunter here picking them up. And a power bomb, a huge emphatic power bomb. That's about as textbook power bomb as you're gonna get. But Grace now 
Grace up. Grace trying to pick Hunter up. Then boot right, uh, knee I should say, right in the midsection. Picking him up here. Nope. Inverted DDT. Nice reversal of the inverted DDT. And it looks like Grace is going to tag out and bring Jackson back into the fold. Jackson, I don't know, stomping an ant or something. Uh, that was that was a fail. The boot right to the face. That one didn't. That one didn't fail. Boot right to the midsection. Nasty reversal right on the shoulder. Just twisting that arm and just throwing him down right on the shoulder there. And picking him up in a no. Almost like a flapjack or move there. Just right on the front of him. Just just crashing down. Just face first. And yeah, wait a minute here. Setting him up in the corner. He is in the wrong part of town right now. A superplex. Half a superplex off of the middle rope. But look at Jackson now. Jackson was trying to tag out. Jackson realized he was in trouble and was trying to tag his partner. Bradley Grace, but wait a minute. Michael Hunter with a huge huge full Nelson slam that could have put him down one two but no maybe a little bit of that distraction from Bradley Grace on the referee maybe that helped him gave him a little bit of opportunity to to kick out but right now the hunters wait a minute roll over one one count only and Jackson's gonna need to try to do what he was trying to do before and that's tag out Let's get the fresher man, get Bradley Grace into this matchup. Right now, he and Frank Hunter. Oh, nasty suplex. Just showing his power right there. Big suplex, belly to back. And Irish whip into the corner. Like he was going to try to tag his, tag his partner. That was not to be. And the Hunters cutting this ring off. And a European uppercut in the corner. Taking him right back to their neck of the woods. Taking him away from his tag team partner. Smart tag team wrestling by the Hunters. And now they're just bringing, bringing John Jackson right back over to their part. Their part of the ring. Cutting that ring off. And he's going to need to do something quick. He's going to need to mount somebody. And now he's trying to, drag, trying to drag Frank Hunter over to his side. Hunter having none of that. Buried some elbows deep in the midsection. Got to take the wind out of the sails of Jackson, but an inverted DDT by Jackson. Jackson picking him up. And there's that spine buster we were talking about. Huge spine buster. Now, wait a minute. What's he going to do here? Oh, yeah, he's got the submission hold on him. We got in the submission, but ranking at that leg. I don't know if if, if Hunter was, was close to the ropes or, or what the case was at that point in time, but holding on. For just a split second and letting go of that move. But wait a minute. Huge sit down power bomb by Jackson. And the Hunters here. One, two are in trouble. Three. And wait a minute. The Hunters were in trouble. And John Jackson out of nowhere hits that huge sit down power bomb and pins Frank Hunter. And guess what? The Handsome Devils are on a roll, picking up another win here. And it looked like John Jackson was in big time trouble, needing to tag out. And he was the one that got the pin here. And the Hunters have fell to the surging, the surging handsome devils here. See if we can uh, see if the if the replay catches it. The huge sit down power bomb was all she wrote for the Hunters. Here's that spine buster. There's that dangerous spine buster we were talking about. As you see how he popped up off the mat. And here, here it is right here. Sit down power bomb. That one planted him. And that's the one that did it. And John Jackson picks up a huge win. He came up big for his team. Especially when he was in there taking the punishment. We thought they didn't have a chance unless he at least tagged in Bradley Grace. But that was not. That was not the case. He came up big time for his team. And the Handsome Devils have won another one here. And you got to believe, if they didn't open the eyes 
of of officials the first time they have definitely opened them now and then it seems like we're having something I'm, I'm hearing we're having some issues something's going on backstage between yeah between brian stokes and david Wynn. it looks like stokes has confronted david Wynn about stepping in earlier on and 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 taking that chair away from him as he was trying to attack pop and it looks like we got a scuffle with backstage and brian stokes has just confronted david Wynn, and he's all over win right now and it's the backstage area ladies and gentlemen as brian stokes and david Wynn are fighting right now you gotta believe that stokes stokes was not happy about uh about david Wynn crashing his party especially when he was trying to do what he did to jonathan drake to Pac earlier and david Wynn came to the rescue and these guys are fighting it out right now the backstage oh the huge shot oh just just attacking him now just attacking david Wynn. And now he throws him right back, right into the locker room. These guys are fighting in the locker room. Wait a minute. Oh, and then, oh, right across the leg with that, that trash can. Right across the leg with that trash can. I would just throw him into the trash can. It's Brian Stokes, and he is all over David Wynn right now. Definitely took exception to sticking his nose in the business. But, if, but, but for good reason. For good reason. Who knows what he was going to do to Pop. And David Wynn did the right thing. He did the right thing by coming out there. Oh, and the table. The table was a ca casualty of war here as these guys are still going at it backstage. These guys are fighting it out. And Brian Stokes. Just 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 acting like a just acting like a jerk lately. And 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 for good reason that, that David Wynn was able to come out and help. But now David Wynn is in a world of trouble. David Wynn. Oh, it just got slammed right into the, the locker area. Now, wait a minute. What's this? On oh, a huge... Oh, huge Urinagi. My gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get somebody back there. We have got to get somebody back there to help David win. He looked like he just got slammed pretty hard back there. Ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. No, we're going to we're, we're gonna try to stick with that and see what's going on. We try to keep you updated, ladies and gentlemen. As we head on to our next contest as we we move on here on warpath and we're gonna have a matchup here between the urban rock star Derek James he's set to make his way down to the ring right now he's gonna go one-on-one -on -one with the man with one of uh, the men that are gonna be involved in that triple threat match at scorch fest 2018 I am talking about vault Vault Daddy will be in action here, taking on Derek James. You know he's got a he's getting ready to to do battle with with the venomous Vinny Watts, who he has been tangled up with, who he has some personal issues and problems with, and the undefeated Vengeance, who has pro personal problems with everyone. Now that triple threat match, like I said, will happen at Scorch Fest on August the 31st. So Derek James awaits his opponent tonight in Vault. Still to come, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Internet Championship match on the line as Lover Lavar's open challenge continues. As he takes on Crimson Nova, he's going to defend the Internet Championship against Crimson Nova, who answered the challenge, as well as that six-man tag team match tonight. World Champion Scythe teams with the Inner Circles, Joshua Cross and Jimmy Reno, to take on the Maniac Mason Gilbert and Triple CW World Tag Team Champions, him and Revenant, The Void. That is coming up for you and vault getting ready getting ready for this matchup and vault is the human highlight reel the resident human highlight reel of cyber created championship wrestling he will definitely definitely make a highlight reel uh, this man can do everything he is high flying he's exciting he's he's hard hitting uh, his shooting star press is a thing of beauty that's how he uses. The, that's what he uses to 
to to win most of his matches. Here we go. Will he get an opportunity to do it against a man who is definitely going to be a very game competitor in the urban rock star Derek James? James takes him down. James got the waist lock here. Oh, and just throwing him down it was Derek James. A boot right into the midsection. And the vault is not careful. A man like Derek James will come in and win this matchup. If his mind is not on this match, if he's looking past this to the triple threat match at Scorchfest, he's going to be in for a uh, rude awakening here tonight. A boot right to the face. A double leg takedown. Ooh, and a kick right in the chest from vault. Wait a minute, what's going on here? And look at this. And again, and again, sticking his nose in people's business is the venomous Vinny Watts. And Vinny Watts is down to the ring right now. And Vinny Watts is distracting Vault. And Derek James looks to capitalize on this. And Vinny Watts coming out playing the little mind games with Vault here. And Vinny Watts just that fast has faded to black. He's went right up back up the ramp. Came out to play a little mind games. Try to get in the head of Vault. The Vault needs to refocus. Needs to recenter. And look, it looks like he's off. He just definitely missed that drop kick there. He rebounded with that. But he definitely needs to refocus on the task at hand. And, and know that definitely that Watts was only out there to play distraction. We have not seen or or heard from Vengeance. We don't know if uh, if, if that man, the, the third component in that triple threat match, uh, is even here tonight. I, I I have not. I mean, then again, it's not like he's going to announce himself being here. He's kind of antisocial. But Volt here, refocusing on this match, and nicely done, taken down. Derek James, and James is hurting. Holding the small of his back here. Vault picking him up. And Vault. Beautifully done. And holding that back. And wait a minute. And Vault now. Vault to the top. And Vault with a splash. Jumping off. A splash. Hits him one. No. One count only. And Derek James has a lot of stamina. Derek James can take punishment. He can take a licking and keep on ticking. As the old adage goes, but Vault right now still on top of him, staying on top of him. And Vault now trying to get back into this. The crowd's behind him. Especially that guy front row on the left is pumping his fist. It almost looks like he almost took his arm out of the socket there. But Vault now. Nice reversal of the knee right to the top of the head. And Vault here picking him up. Oh, I just slamming him down, head and neck. And Derek James. Trying to get out to the outside. Trying to pull himself back up. James is definitely feeling it right now. I buried the shoulder. Right into the midsection. And Vault now. Vault looks like he's going to fly. He's trying to pick him. He's trying to trying to get him up here. And Vault's going to fly. The springboard from the top moonsault to the outside. And that's what I'm talking about. About Vault being the human highlight reel. Vault will take chances just like that. The huge springboard. Moonsault. He hit it perfection. That was a thing of beauty. He will take risks. And you got to know he's going to take risks just like that at the triple threat match. And it's going to be going to be a very different clash of styles. It's going to be interesting because it's going to be three. It's going to be Vengeance who just beats you up and brutalizes you. You have Vinny Watts who, who, who's pretty well-rounded, pretty balanced. He is very very talented you got to give the devil his due and then you have vault who will take to the air on you and neither of his opponents at scorch fest are known for doing that so how will they fare how will how will they try to adapt and to the aerial offense of someone like vault we will see at that triple threat match we will definitely see as Derek James now looking to turn momentum back into his favor on the outside here is he he has he has vault now and he hits him with a DDT plants him right on the top of his head there now throwing him in and Derek James this could be the opportunity he needs 
And what a huge win this would be for Derrick James getting to win this close to Scorch Fest, getting this close to, to a lot of big things changing and happening a blockbuster in Cyber Created Championship Wrestling. That would definitely be a feather in his cap. And you got to believe there'd definitely be nothing but good things to get momentum and continue it moving forward. As right now, Derrick James and a power slam out of the corner. And he is well on his way. Hooking the leg here. Could this be it? One. One count only. Never mind. Volt just definitely proved he had a lot more left in the tank. And Volt now getting fired up. A snapmare. But no. A punch right to the midsection. That one has him doubled. Nicely done. Northern Light Suplex with a bridge. One. No. Two count only. And Volt now. Trying to figure out what he's got to do to put Derek James away. Like he's wasting a lot of time here. But wait a minute. Standing moonsault. Thing of beauty. Nicely done. And Derek James. Looks like he's reeling. Oh, just a nasty spinning kick. But catches him. Oh, and on the rebound. On the rebound. Caught him right in the mouth. And Vault now taken to the air. Could this be it? The crowd starts to stand. Could this be the shooting star pressing it is? He hit him. He hit it. One, two, and he got him. Shooting star press. And ladies and gentlemen, that was it. Vault picks up a huge and impressive win over Derrick James. Heading into Scorch Fest. And Vault looking good despite the venomous Vinny Watts trying to come out and play a distraction, trying to play some mind games with Vault. Earlier on in this match, Vault was able to, to shift his focus back to his match, back to Derrick James, and picked up the impressive win. As you see some of the action here, some of the near falls. There's that beautiful Northern Lights for the near fall, for the two count. There's that standing moonsault. And Vault, man, he is, he is damn impressive. Here comes that shooting star press. Taking all the wind out of the sails of Derrick James. And Vault getting ready for that triple threat match. As it'll be him versus Vengeance versus Vinnie Watts. That's a lot of V's getting thrown around right there. But at Scorch Fest, we're going to see which one of those three will be the better man. And who's going to settle the score as these guys have been intertwined, have been tangled up in a feud uh, for quite some time now. That will come to a head at Scorch Fest. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be moving on here. And we're back. We're going to be moving on tonight with the Triple CW Internet Championship match. Crimson Nova has answered the challenge and Crimson Nova will get a title shot here against the I don't even know what else you could call him he's not red hot he's not white hot I don't even know what else you can call him at this point anymore in Lover LeVar Lover LeVar is on the roll of a lifetime he defends his championship damn near every week and just wins and wins and wins and in impressive fashion. It's like he has this entire thing figured out. And right now, in Cyber Creative Championship Wrestling, he is unstoppable. He's untouchable. He, I, I just, there's no other way to explain the role that our internet champion is on. Uh, I mean, every night could be that night. Every night could be it. Anybody can beat anybody in any given match. I mean, could this be Crimson Nova's night? Could this be the night that the challenges backfire on Lover LeVar? Could this be his last title defense? Could the streak be broken up? We'll find out in just a few short moments, but you got to know. Crimson Nova looks like he's, looks like he's well prepared, looks like he's focused and ready. He answered the challenge earlier on today, saying he wanted this matchup. He wanted the opportunity and it was granted by Lover LeVar, by our internet champion. 
as you see getting ready and looking focused it's Crimson Nova and there he is there is the man who is on the roll Lover Lavar, our cyber created championship wrestling internet champion and Lover Lavar makes his way down to the ring oozing with confidence and for good reason he's been unstoppable no one has been able to figure out to crack the code of Lover Lavar. he just comes down to the ring does the same thing he does that's just win I mean he comes out he wrestles his matches and he wins that deadly devastating scissors kick right to the back of the head and neck has claimed victim after victim after victim and he's still on a roll he is still at it and if it ain't broke don't try to fix it as lover Lavar is continuing his role and will that continue tonight we're about to find out a few short moments time will tell but there is the prize the triple CW the cyber created championship wrestling internet championship that will be defended here again tonight and the opposition is Crimson Nova is that man right there will he be up for the challenge and Crimson Nova getting ready huge opportunity here if he if he if he defeats him not only will he be the man that has finally beaten Lover Lavar, he will be our internet champion You got to figure if, if there's a new internet champion, will will the next champion, will he be as fighting of a champion uh, as Lover Lavar has? Will he will he implement those those challenges, those weekly challenges? We we don't know. I mean, we've 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 had only one champion, and he has a unquenchable thirst for competition. And Lover Lavar, he doesn't turn down challenges, and he looks to defend his championship every single week and he has been doing so successfully and that title was on the line right here we got Crimson Nova we got Lover Lavar, and here we go we got our title match here and Lover Lavar just a scoop slam right out the bat right off the bat and an elbow drop and he's just so crisp and fluid in the ring there's just everything has purpose and meaning for Lover Lavar. And nicely done. Just dropping him down to suplex. And now, Lover Lavar here. And Lavar with a headstand. Showing off a little bit here. I mean, once I mean, when you win that much, and you, your confidence is just, just through the roof. The Crimson Nova's got to figure something out. And just slamming him face down. That's a good start. Kick right in the back by Crimson Nova. And Nova, could he bring the Internet Championship back to him and his him and his partner Crimson Nova one half of the tag team known as Blood Law getting a singles opportunity here tonight going for a splash but missed going for a splash but it was not successful and Lavar with double feet right to the midsection the Irish whip a nice clothesline taking him down grabbing at his neck there Grabbing at his head and neck, and this move right here cannot do anything but complicate things in that head and neck region. And you know that that scissors kick definitely plays on that. If he drops that scissors kick on his opponent, it's pretty much it. Now Crimson Nova, Irish whip into the ropes, and Nova, nice arm drag by Crimson Nova. Crimson Nova is celebrating, but what he needs to do is stay on top of the champion. You do not want to give a man like Lover Lavar any, any inch. Picking him up now. Now what staggers him? Wait a minute here. Picking him up and throwing him, just folding him up like an accordion. And Lover Lavar looks like he might be hurt. And a kick right to the back. A kick right to the back. And wait a minute, picking him up. But no reversal. Inverted DDT. Reversal by Lavar, hooking the leg. One, one count only. Crimson Nova still in this match, still very much in this match. It's now Lavar 
He's twisting and pulling at the head and neck. Again, looks to soften that up. And again, the headlock, even though, even though it's, it's showboaty, it's, uh, it's effective nonetheless. He has definitely had his point of attack on the head and neck region of Crimson Nova. And that cannot be a good sign. He like he was going for a short DDT. That would have run right back on it. And Crimson Nova has, has yet to amount a whole lot of offense here in this match. As we see that patented airplane spin from LeVar. It's one of his signature moves. He definitely uses that a lot. And wait a minute. He's going for his sexy elbow, as he calls it. And he hits it right across the chest. Dragging him over. Wait a minute. Could this be it? One. Two and no. Two count only. Two count only. As Zavar hit that sexy elbow. But wait a minute. Looks like he's setting up. It's usually the prelude. A boot right to the midsection. And he's going for the scissors kick. And he hits it. He hits the scissors kick. He hooks the leg. One. Two. And he retains the championship once again. And the roll continues. Love of Zavar continues to steamroll through his championship reign. If you look back at some of the action here, which is pretty much Lover LeVar highlights, uh, Crimson Nova didn't really get a chance to do a whole lot of anything. Wait, wait a minute, guys. I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting something. I'm hearing, I'm hearing that it seems like Due to, I guess, from from what we heard earlier on, from from uh, wanting to be noticed, wanting to get the opportunity, it seems like Mythos has just formally challenged Lover Lavar for the Internet Championship. Mythos said he is next. He said he wants next, and Mythos has just challenged. Internet champion Lover Lavar to a match at Scorchfest for the Triple CW Internet Championship. And we will wait and see. I'm pretty sure he's going to accept the challenge. He is a fighting champion. But I guess I guess coming out here and saying what he said earlier on tonight was not for nothing. He actually wants to challenge and has thrown out the challenge. To Lover Lavar for the Internet Championship, so we gotta wait and see. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Mythos uh, will have his challenge accepted by the Internet Champion, but that's huge development. I just heard that and conveyed it to you that Mythos has challenged Lover Lavar at Scorchfest for that Internet Championship. We will definitely, uh, once that's confirmed, and if it's confirmed, we we will definitely get that to you. But now we're going to get to our main event, our six-man tag team matchup as the Void teams with Mason Gilbert to take on the inner circle that teams with the world heavyweight champion Scythe. Six-man tag action. As you see, Mason Gilbert is our number one contender. He will take on... Scythe at Scorchfest and ladies and gentlemen as I said earlier on in the show we now know what the stipulation for that matchup is going to be for Mason Gilbert's rematch and he will take on Scythe for the Triple CW World Heavyweight Championship at Scorchfest in a best two out of three falls hell in a cell match that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Mason Gilbert looking to win back the World Heavyweight Championship as Scythe defends in a two out of three falls hell in a cell match. That is a huge, huge match and a huge stipulation. Two out of three falls hell in a cell coming to you guys as your main event for Scorchfest on August 31st. So stay tuned, stay with us. Again, if you have not, please like and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. 
to the Meta Wrestling Network so you can get notified when not only Scorchfest hits you, but episodes of Warpath, Ladies First, uh, any of the other specials that we will have coming to you in the near future and moving forward as we move on to WWE 2K19 and onward. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for joining us. As you see, the World Tag Team Champions making their way out now. You have him in the front and on to his left is his tag team partner and running buddy, Revenant. They will team with the number one contender here tonight to take on the inner circles, Joshua Cross, Jimmy Reno, and World Heavyweight Champion Scythe. These are strange individuals here. As we've seen their cohort, they seen, we've seen their buddy earlier on taking on a member of the inner circle uh, in Lillian Cross. Hex defeated Lillian Cross earlier on tonight in that Falls Count Anywhere women's division matchup. And uh, we look pretty sure that they're looking to do the same here. And picking up another win versus the inner circle members tonight. As you see him, the mastermind behind the staple, the void. One half of the tag team champions and Revenant. Should be a very interesting matchup. We'll see how how well that the void does teaming with Mason Gilbert. We'll see how well uh, Scythe teams with the inner circle. And of course, uh, there's always the opportunity that Mason Gilbert will be able to get his hands on Scythe and vice versa and we'll see the Void mix it up with the inner circle as you see the team here the of the Void and Mason Gilbert as they await their tag team opponents here tonight and look at these two jerks the resident D-bags of Cyber Created Championship Wrestling representing the inner circle we have Joshua Cross in front and that man wearing that ridiculous feathered hoodie or whatever you want to call that is Jimmy Reno behind him with that stupid shaved haircut look. Cross and Reno, they have their opportunity at Scorch Fest as well. That Extreme Rules match, tag team title matchup. And, and, I mean, it's it's shaping up. Scorch Fest uh, 2018 is is shaping up to be a huge, huge event. We have the Triple CW Women's Championship as Diamond Delgado looks to dethrone Vanity. We've seen those those mix it up earlier. We have Vault, Vengeance, and Vinny Watts in a triple threat match. These guys are going to go at it. They've been entangled for so long. We have. As I spoke about this matchup here, um, the Tag Team Championship match, Extreme Rules match. We have the World Championship match, Best 2 out of 3 in the Hell in the Cell. Uh, and I'm pretty sure more matches to come. Uh, just stay tuned to, to uh, the Meta Wrestling Network's Facebook and Instagram for those announcements as well. As you see, the last opponent, the last entrant out here is your cyber created championship wrestling world heavyweight champion Scythe. Scythe was able to soften up Mason Gilbert with a kendo stick attack prior to their match at May Massacre using that to his advantage to dethrone Mason Gilbert and to become only the second cyber created championship wrestling world heavyweight champion he defends as Mason Gilbert looks to invoke his rematch clause in a Hell in a Cell match. Best 2 out of 3 falls. That will happen on August 31st at Scorch Fest. As Scythe makes his way down as the world champion makes his way down to the ring. He will team with the inner circle. take on the void and maniac Mason Gilbert and it's main event time 
Scorch Fest 2018 will come to you, ladies and gentlemen, as well. We'll come to you from Miami, Florida. We're going to be doing uh, a bigger venue. It's going to be the uh, in front of the most people that we've had uh, for uh, a Triple CW event as we look to expand and, and broaden our horizons and, and, and get bigger and better for you guys uh, as we move forward. But right now, our main event at Jimmy Reno right now is on top of Mason Gilbert. Never mind, Mason Gilbert just buries the knee right to the midsection. And a huge club and blow takes him down. Oh, and a nasty shot. And Scythe looking right on at his opposition. Scythe, Scythe. Staring right at his opponent, who he's gonna be locked in a cell with. Two out of three falls. But a jumping uh, inverted stunner, I guess you wanna call that? from Jimmy Reno and Reno tagging in his tag team partner as Mason Gilbert is in the wrong part of town in the wrong neck of the woods double back body drop and a teamwork between these two D-bags it's Joshua Cross now putting the knee right to the back and Gilbert now Gilbert may need to tag out that's if he gets the opportunity to do so because Joshua Cross right now is all over top of him and up and over and down on the outside. And Cross now stalking Mason Gilbert. Throws him back in the ring. And Gilbert now. Gilbert looked like he was trying to tag out, trying to tag in Revenant. It was not the case with Luthes Press and just raining down some shots right on the face. And wait a minute, and now Jimmy Reno. And Reno is holding him back. You gotta believe that Mason Gilbert looked like he was trying to Get over and tag one of his partners. Tag out. He looks like he's doing that right now. As Joshua Cross was unable. Unable to get his wits about. Unable to come back up. But wait a minute. Rebound. Just a nasty backbreaker. And now Joshua Cross is in there mixing it up with him. He's going to meet him and Revenant. In an extreme rules match for the tag team championships at Scorch Fest. As he hangs him up. And now, Joshua Cross. Wait a minute, nicely done reversal by him. Him is very dangerous in there. He will take out your legs and he will put you in a very devastating knee bar submission. Who had, he, he will tap you out. You have no choice but to tap out. Him is very dangerous. With attacking the leg area of his opponents. And now Revenant in now. And now tagging Mason Gilbert back in. Looks like the, champ, uh, the challenger wants back in on this matchup wait a minute Gilbert what's he doing Mason Gilbert had the electric chair drop but Joshua Cross able to fight out of it and Cross now and hits him with a, a crossroads yeah okay he, he hit him with a crossroads and just throwing a lot of crosses out there these days and now Joshua Cross has him up and a Death Valley driver Mason Gilbert in trouble. Mason Gilbert had to tag back out. And him going for a drop kick to the knee like we were talking about, but a spear. He got caught by a spear. Nicely done reversal by Joshua Cross. And Cross. He just ate a jawbreaker there. But it looks like, looks like Cross is in some trouble right now. Him and him are going back at it, but no. And him got some up. But wait a minute. DDT. It was just reversal after reversal after reversal. And a boot right to the knee as you've seen it right there. Now wait a minute. Plants it with a DDT. My goodness, that was a big DDT. He hit him with there. And him trying to keep doing another boot to the knee. And another big DDT. And him's in, him is in firm control right now. Joshua. Cross is in trouble and now him cutting off the ring. Very nice, very smart to do. Or oh, just rubbing the elbow right across the face. And again, just face washing him now. Yeah, he's the choke in the corner. There's nothing pretty about the members of the void. They make no bones about it. They make no uh excuses. Nor are they trying to be uh role models or or anything like that. They are 
They are winning at all costs. And wait a minute, here's that leg lock. Here's that leg bar we were talking about. And, and, and Joshua Cross is in trouble as him is ranking back. He is in some big time trouble. He is in big time trouble. He's fighting the tap. He is fighting the tap, but using those long legs. Using those long legs was Joshua Cross. And he was able to put the foot right into the face of him, breaking that submission up. Right to the corner now. But wait a minute now. And him. What's he doing? Him is setting up. Him is setting him up. And wait a minute. Look at this. Look at this teamwork. And a, just a suplex powerbomb variation. Out of the corner. My goodness. One. Two. And three. And they got him. They got him. They got him. And Revenant. And him. Picked up a huge win. Taking down the void. Early in this matchup, world champion Scythe and Mason Gilbert never got a chance to mix it up. Actually, Scythe, the world champion, never even got into this matchup. I don't know if he's 100% upset at that or not, but I know Mason Gilbert is. Mason Gilbert did not get an opportunity to mix it up with his opponent at Scorchfest as this Triple CW world champion Scythe. You're not seeing this right now because you're looking at the replays here of that nasty double team move. Scythe is already gone. Scythe has grabbed his title and he has walked up the ramp and he is already out of the arena, ladies and gentlemen. He's already to the back and who knows. But ladies and gentlemen, making a statement, a huge statement as the tag team champions as the void put down the inner circle and I guess Scythe because he was on paper with them but he didn't give a crap but ladies and gentlemen that's going to be it for us August 31st is Scorchfest ladies and gentlemen stay tuned for more involving Scorchfest I'm Deltastic out